Welcome to the first full example video from Chapter 8, where we are dealing with collisions and the conservation of momentum. So we're going to be exploring in all of our examples the problem-solving process that we've been applying each chapter and the specific details that we want to focus on specifically for Chapter 8. Now, our step one for all of the chapters that we've ever done is to have a picture. So we have a truck that is moving east. So we'll call this the first mass, and we'll label that 3,000 kilograms. And we see that it's moving to the right, which we will choose to be our standard positive direction. So positive 15 meters per second. And we have a car that is moving west. So if we call that the second object, M2, that would be 1,000 kilograms. And the second object's velocity at the start of the problem, V2 initial, is negative, because it's pointing west, 25 meters per second. Now right now, I can tell us that the most commonly missed idea in all of chapter 8 is just the simple idea from chapter two that arrows that point in opposite directions have to have opposite signs. If we're going too quickly, we'll just use 15 and positive 25 and be done with it. And we need to make sure we recognize that one of the most fundamental core ideas about the physics we're doing this semester is that direction has meaning. So that negative sign is absolutely essential when we're making a list of the given information. So in part A, when we're asked to find the final velocity, any time that we have a collision, we have to use the momentum conservation equation. That will always, always be true for us. So the momentum conservation equation will be provided at test time, and you can look it up uh, in your notes or the slides uh, before that. So it's m1 times v1 initial, plus m2 times v2 initial equals m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. The idea is if we have two different objects, the momentum from each object at the beginning will be equal to the total momentum of each object at the end. So if we look at this problem, the one last extra piece that we have here is that they stick together. So if the cars stick together, so if the objects stick together, then they'll have the same final velocity. And that's important because it means that we won't have two separate unknowns. V1 final will be equal to V2 final, and we'll just call that V final. That's the thing we're looking for. So that's really important when we're plugging in numbers into our equation. So this setup here, the key understanding that only when objects stick together can we do this step. We can now plug in numbers. So we have 3,000 times 15 plus 1,000 times negative 25 is equal to 3,000, and we'll call that V final, plus 1,000, and that's still going to be V final. All right, so we can simplify this. On the left, we have 20,000, and on the right, we have 3,000 plus 1,000 of the same thing, so 4,000. All right, so if we divide both sides by 4,000, we will get that the final velocity ends up positive. It might not have if the car was going a little bit faster or the truck had a little less mass. So the positive means that the overall direction they'll be moving is to the east. And they'll be moving quite slowly, 5 meters per second, because a lot of that eastward momentum canceled out with the westward momentum. All right, so that's the end of part A. Part B is asking us to think about the kinetic energy. 
We are not saying that the kinetic energy is the same at the beginning and at the end. We are simply asking what is the kinetic energy at the start? So at the start or the before, the kinetic energy would be 1 half m1 v1 initial squared plus 1 half m2 v2 initial squared. And the kinetic energy at the end would be 1 half times the total mass, m1 plus m2, because they stuck, stuck together, times the final velocity squared. Otherwise, it would have two separate terms that look like this, but are for the final velocities. So if we plug in our numbers here, we have 1 half times 3,000 times 15 squared plus 1 half times 1,000. Now something worth noting here, kinetic energy is not a vector, so it doesn't care about the direction. We really don't need the minus sign, but even if we put it in, it should be in parentheses and it will cancel out no matter what. So we get two large amounts of kinetic energy and they'll add up to be a really big amount of energy, 650,000 joules. At the end of the situation, we have one half and we have 3,000 plus 1,000 for the total energy, uh, total mass rather, times this final five squared, and we end up with 50,000 joules. So this gives us a chance to recognize that we cannot use energy conservation in a collision. We have to use momentum conservation in every single collision that we come across. So it's important for us to recognize that anytime things hit each other, we need to be relying on chapter eight ideas, whether we're having something hit each other in um, test two or on the final exam, we need to make that connection in our heads. That's a key concept for this whole chapter. So we will see um, more examples where we have more kinetic energy at the end than we did at the beginning. Some examples where we have less, a few examples we'll talk about later on where we have the same amount of kinetic energy. That's a special type of collision called an elastic collision. But for now, we are um, through with this problem. We answered the amount of energy before and the amount of energy after. And it's worth noting that the missing energy went into all of the mangled metal and loud sounds and heating up of the metal um, in this collision. And that's where energy stays conserved, like we thought about in chapter seven, but it isn't trackable in the kinetic energy term specifically. That's it for this example. I will see you in the next ones.